Welcome back. This is the second episode of Crafting a 442 with Everton. Yes, our goal is simple. We want to avoid relegation with this team. But first, we need to find out what kind of a 442 system this team can play with. If you're going to be in a relegation dogfight, the first thing you want to make sure is whether or not your defenders are strong in the air. Because you're going to end up defending quite a fair bit. So you want to know if your players can deal with crosses. Jumping reach, hitting, important attributes. But when I'm looking at my team, only one player stands out, Jared Bronthwaite. He's great. The rest are average. Like 14 jumping reach, 17 isn't something that we can jump up and go. Yeah, these are great defenders. I mean, the next player that's got great jumping reach is going to be playing in midfield. He is um, 15 for jumping reach and only 12 for hitting. So we can't really expect this team to be dealing with crosses consistently well. That means for our 4-4-2, what we're going to do is we're going to start with something quite simple. When I started the season with Everton, there were a few players that we injured, including Jack Harrison, uh, Seamus Coleman. Um, what we want to do is understand what we can put out um, on the left and the right flanks. Now, Mackenzie Hunt is a youngster. We can use him as a winger. And we can definitely use him as a fullback. Nathan Patterson is another young winger we can rely on. He can be playing on the left and the right side. Um, his decision making is a bit poor, but he has the physical attributes to help us uh, in transitions. Then, of course, we've got Danjuma, an inverter winger. He's most likely going to start out as our left winger. Now, we're going to rely on him heavily throughout the season because they don't really have another left winger who can do what he does, which is to cut inside from the left wing. He can cut in from the left wing. We'll play him as an inverted winger. He'll come this way. He'll form a partnership, we hope, with Beto. And then we can leave Calvert Lewin in front. Um, on the right flank, we're going to use McNeil. McNeil is also a left-footed player. He's also going to tend to come inside, but he's going to stay wide in the transitions. We'll have another fullback just patrolling behind him. Now, this is one system that we can use. Another system that we can probably use, and we're going to be testing all these out in preseason before we jump into uh, tweaks to the system. Now, this is going to be slightly different. Here, we'll be playing with um, a setup that might change towards the middle of the season or the start, depending on how we play. The idea of using a libero is pretty risky with this team. So we might just go with a central defender, have four at the back at all times, and then have one running away. Now, this is going to be played as a mid block. With a winger running, we're going to depend on McNeil to be doing most of the work. This will allow us to rest Danjuma and play somebody else in this position where this role can easily be converted into a winger. Here we'll play a more direct game where we try to feed the ball to our strikers as early as possible. Now, I actually like a low block 4-4-2. It can play really well with two ball-winning midfielders. The issue we have with Everton, they don't have those kind of players that can win those balls in the air defensively. And it's a risky proposition to play a low block with a team that doesn't have that much strength in the air. They've got two decent players up top who are great in the air and have pace. And what we're going to do is leverage off the strengths of this team using the wingers that they have to craft the 4-4-2. Preseason is about getting players to understand the tactical system. So I'm going to be playing um, basically my first 11 and any reserves in the positions I do expect to use them in occasionally. I will not be playing players out of position because we don't have that much uh, latitude for making mistakes this season. In preseason, it's about getting my players familiar with the system, but it's also about me looking out for transitions to tell me that I am doing things the right way. Along the way, I'm going to discover things about my players. Like here, Nathan Patterson, a defender. I've noticed he makes a couple of mistakes at the back. I'm also looking at his attributes. His crossing is fantastic. His decision-making needs some help. I'm going to train him as a winger. I want him to get up the pitch and give me another option on the right flank. Because if I'm going to be playing a 4-4-2, those wingers need to get substituted eventually. And uh, we're going to improve his uh, decision making. So there are several options. We can play him as a winger or a white midfielder. So I can play him as a white midfielder on support. Decisions is included. Right, so his mentals are going to, they're going to work on his mentals. He's going to passing and technique. And I can just tag in a quickness here to maintain his acceleration, his space. So we get a nice little profile of this player um, and the right kind of attributes in the long run. So whenever I look at failed transitions during preseason, that triggers something in me to uh, 
address it in training immediately. So with him, Nathan Patterson, we're going to have to improve that aspect of his game. And I do this for all my players. Another thing I'm going to do is ask Jordan Pickford to take direct free kicks. It's pretty interesting asking him to take free kicks. His uh, free kick rating is 10. His technique is 14. His acceleration is 8. So it might be fun watching him trying to get back to defend after a failed free kick. But to do that, the day before the game, go to your set pieces, shooting range, add player, pick your goalkeeper if you want to do something like that. Now, the ball winning midfielder in both tactics is on support. Now, this player is more likely to arrive into this position because of the partnership that we can get with an inverter winger and a DLF. They will kind of drop, uh, give this player an opportunity to right, arrive near the edge of the area. So what I really want from this player is long shots. Now he's got 11 long shots. Onana has 10 long shots. So the person who's the best for this role will probably be Dukore. Because Dukore has long shots of 13. Um, he's got technique of 13. He's got aggression of 15. Uh, his position is decent. His vision is decent. So And he plays 1-2. So he'll be able to combine really well with these three uh, roles or players and then arrive to score goals from the edge of the area. And this is exactly what we spot in the Knicks in our game. And this is exactly what we spot in our game against them. Um, and this is something that we spot in one of our friendly matches. So for me, the game is all about looking and to check to see whether my players are in the right positions. Here we got our four build out. Uh, the ball winning midfielder on defense is here. Because we're using focus, play left and right. The central midfielder shift to the side of the focus. Here we go. He moves up to support play. Dukore gets here. He shifts the ball to the inverter winger. Now look at Dukore, the position he takes up. He's arriving just nicely to take a shot and place it beyond the keeper's reach. Within the same game, we actually changed to the other 4 4 2, which has got inverted fullbacks. Now, here, watch where Dukore is. The inverted fullbacks come in, they clear the ball, and he arrives at the edge of the area. We pick up the loose ball, perfect position to take another long shot. 4 4 2, this is how um, the team is going to look like. Patterson or McNeil are playing in this position. Then we've got Dan Juma, he owns this position. I can't think of anybody else who can play here. Then in uh, left back position, we've got Mikolenko and Ashley Young, Godfrey and Seamus Coleman, Bronthwaite, Keane, and Tarkovsky are going to hold these two positions. Then Dukore owns this. Onana will be the preferred partner. Um, Idrissia Gwe can come in, but he doesn't have jumping reach. And we definitely, we are, we are really short on options when it comes to jumping reach in this team. So he is probably going to come on as a substitute. And then until uh, Seamus Coleman comes back and Jack Harrison come back, the right wing position, we're just going to have to use Patterson here till um, Harrison returns from injury and we get Seamus Coleman back from injury. And both these players are out for a few months. So we'll have to rotate and get these players to um, get this, these positions going. Kyle John will most likely make a few appearances from the bench. We've gone through preseason. We've identified the players. We kind of have a game plan in mind, um, and but we all know preseason. You know, nothing's uh, set in stone in preseason because plans can easily go out of the window once the season starts and your players start to show their true colors. So yes, on the next episode, we're gonna have a couple of uh, matches, and during the course of the match, you will see what I do with the four four two. How will it do? Will we be able to um, do well? On top of that, we're going to start analyzing. So we're going to play a couple of games and I'm going to show you how I analyze the tactic to identify key players within a system to tell us, hey, if we want to score good goals, that guy has to be playing. So yes, all that and more on the next episode when we dive a bit deeper into the analysis of the tactical system to see how it's performing i hope you join me for the next show let me know your thoughts on these episodes that form the basis of a 442 system with everton i look forward to hearing from you you guys stay safe take care of yourselves i'll see you again soon Bye bye